Okay, we're at the Perth Crop Updates and this morning in the plenary session the announcement was made that the De Bruin Group are going to build, have exclusive rights to building the integrated Harrington Seed Destructor. And so it's great news, so I've got some of the important people involved here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, but firstly Ray, it's uh, just about 20 years since you came up with the idea and started on this journey. Just tell us in a snapshot, you've got about one minute, tell us you know, a little bit about those 20 years. Uh, yeah, 20 years and one week since I uh, sat in an aeroplane with uh, Jeff and Mike Glenn and Steve King yep. and talked about going into a total crop program and I knew what was happening in WA and I knew I'd have to do something with uh, residue and I decided I was going to bash it to death and then I just had to find something to do it with and thanks to Mike and Jeff they found something and it continued on from there, but it, it actually stalled for six years because I couldn't find someone to give it any accreditation. Lo and behold, I run into the Professor Powell's at a meeting, and that was probably the beginning of the project really going. And in the last 10 years, we've taken it from an idea to its um, what's name released today, and I, I couldn't be happier. It's a, it's a leap year, so I won't forget. I won't forget the day of release. Yeah, it's been right. 20 years, and um, it's wonderful to think it's come to fruit. And we've been using the integrated now for three years, and it's really come a long way from from where I want it. But interestingly, 14 years ago, I stuck a car tire up in the back of my header and I said this is where I want it so oh, this, really? this, this is where we okay. are. It was, a, it was a 14 inch car tire I had sitting in the back of my 2388 and I said this is what I want in here and here we are today we've got it in there and, yep. and we've got a manufacturer and everything so it's a wonderful day. Fantastic Ray and can I confirm that the name is going to be the Integrated Harrington Seed Destructor? Yeah it's called the IHSD. Yep awesome. Now also with me is Scott De Bruin. Scott is from the De Bruin Group, yep. Engineering Group, uh, based in Mount Gambier in South Australia. Mm -hmm. And you guys started out, you've built some of the tow behind mm -hmm. um, destructors. How many of those did you end up building? Uh, we've got about 10 units which are operating out throughout Australia. Um, so we, we signed up with the GRDC going back, um, this is the fourth year. Um, and uh, we've had a lot of experience with the, the seed destructor. Um, it's quite a different unit to, to what this one is, obviously. Um, well, that was a trail behind unit with its own power source. Um, but we're very excited about moving into the integrated unit. Yep, and so today we've announced that the De Bruin Group have exclusive rights to, to build it. Just tell us a little bit about that deal, Scott. Okay, so um, De Bruin Engineering is the sole licensee for the integrated unit. Um, so we're the only manufacturer um, that can build this thing and uh, distribute it throughout Australia but also throughout the patent territories. Yep. And so what are the plans for this year? When are you going, you know, how many are you going to roll out? What colour headers? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, good question. The question everybody wants to know. Um, so this year we're building 10 units um, and the platforms will be available is on the case in New Holland. Yep. And um, and you, your 10 units though this year already uh, subscribed, is that right? Yeah, so the first 10 units are already allocated, that's correct. Yeah, but if, you know, if there's growers out there and they want to know what the go is, can they contact you and put their name down for next year? Um, so the best thing is um, we have the websites up and available now, which is uh, ihsd.com. So people can have a look at that. It's got a um, subscription details on there. So if people want to put in their name and details, then we can get back to them um, with details regarding the, the unit. Yep. Okay, and with me also is Devon, isn't it? I've got that right, yep. Um, you're with Macintosh and Son. Tell me where you guys fit in. Correct. Well, we've really been, it's been customer push. So uh, we've had interest in the product for about two years now. 18 months to two years, we've been watching, sitting on the sideline, I guess, to some extent, waiting for it to go from the hands of the GRDC into commercial operations. So, you know, we can now, we've now got a great firm to work with and we're happy to be partnering with the De Bruin Group, taking such a great innovation that Ray's come up with and now being able to push it and promote it out in the marketplace and support it once it's out there. So you guys are, are the distributor, is that the term? Correct. We're the national distributor, so we've got an agreement with the De Bruin Group and we'll be pleased to uh, support the product out in the field and on a number of uh, combines in our marketplace. Yep. So tell me what happens. I'm a grower and I want to put one of these things on my harvester. What do I do? Do I call 
uh, Macintosh, and Sun, or do I call the De Bruin Group? What happens? Well, through the De Bruin Group uh, website that Scott mentioned, it's also uh, a lead back to our group through the Macintosh and Sun branches in WA at the moment. Uh, we've got a national distribution uh, you know, agreement with Scott and the De Bruin Group, and we'll, we'll progress that as time goes on. At the moment, we're, we're looking at about eight to ten uh, serial numbers out in the paddock this year, and we'll be focusing on those to get them out. But any, any contact, any registration of interest can be made through any Macintosh and Sun branch. Yep, and if I put my order in and there's one on the way, what happens? Do I install the thing or do you? What, what's the go? No, we're, we're quite adamant and ourselves and the Bruin Group have come to the agreement that we actually want all those units to come through our workshops and we'll be keeping a close eye on making sure they're fitted correctly, making sure they go out and they're started up correctly and we'll be monitoring their progress out in the paddock. Fantastic. So Ray, you've had an integrated Harrington Seed Destructor on one harvester for three years, two harvesters for... Two years. Two years. Just tell us a little bit about that. How have they performed? What can growers expect when they put one of these things on the back of their machine? The interesting thing, Pete, as you know, we had trouble with hydraulics on day one with the on the 92. We really haven't touched them since we got that initial hiccup out of the road, which was just a design fault, and that happens in embryonic stuff. And since then, I think I've had one little broken hydraulic fitting. So, so really, it's um, just worked, and we don't worry about it. We we used to have cameras on the 92 to show you the product was going out, and the actual the actual screen broke its frame and fell off. And I got in the head of one day and I said to young Matt, uh, where, where's the screen gone? We need to put that up. He said, no, look, Gov, it's not going to block up. Leave it. It's beyond the seat. Yeah, right. So that just said it all. Hey, so tell me, can you block these things up? You can, you can block them up, uh, not the mill itself. You can um, stop the material going in, but that's only when you hit, uh, say, we've only done it a couple of times. Once was at night around the back of a dam in, in a patch of green ryegrass. But now the boys have actually learnt to watch the monitor the hydraulics monitor, and that tells you a lot. And I was talking this morning, um, you can actually, they'll probably get an alarm in there where you actually get a pressure drop because the, the mill's bridge. But we've probably only had it twice since we've had them in three years. Yep, and uh, horsepower? Yeah, not, not the scary bit we thought. The first one went on a 92, because we wanted the class so it's nine. Case, case it's a case nine, nine series, yeah, yep. in the case. Uh, because we wanted all that horsepower, then I, I missed out on another nine series and had to buy an eight. And these work side by side in the paddock for the whole program. And the eight's running at 101, 102% of its power, and the 98, the nine series is running about 97. And it's interesting when you go on the monitor, they use exactly the same leaders to the heck there. So uh, they're going to fit on the class eights now with the improvement in the technology. So we're talking class eight and nine headers Class really. eight and nine. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Uh, anything else to add, Scott? No? Well, I guess the main thing is that um, these products, are, are go, they've had a, um, a proof of concept um, through the university and obviously there's a few units that are operating out there in the field. Um, our plan this year is to make sure that we closely monitor these, um, the first 10 units that go out. Um, and it's to make sure that these units are built rigorously enough um, so that they can survive in commercial conditions. Awesome. So the game plan is to have a good 2016 and then uh, hopefully roll out a lot more in 2017. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. All good.